Greetings and welcome to another episode of Jared Didn't Know JavaScript That One Time. I recently had a coding interview that involved evaluating one schema against another. Uh, the details of it aren't that important, but one thing that came out of it in the middle of the interview, no less, was that you can't break out of a for each loop. Um, I had forgotten that little tidbit and it probably screwed up my chances of getting hired. So hopefully after you read this, you won't say, make the same mistake I did. Don't be like me. MDN knows the answer, of course. Uh, as they say, there is no way to stop or break a for each loop other than by throwing an exception. If you need behavior, the for each method is the wrong tool. That is some hardcore sass coming from the MDN docs. However, they're right. Knowing which tool is to choose is important. But before we get too deep into why you can't break out of a for each loop, uh, let's examine what a loop even is and where for each came from. A loop in programming solves a pretty common problem, I need to run the same code against all this data. Or put simply, it is repeating the same code over and over on loop until we reach a defined end state. For the sake of comparison, we're going to solve the same problem using the various loop types. Here's the problem. We're going to compare two arrays and see if the items in them are the same. And here's the data that we're going to compare. We have two arrays, Jedi's and Sith, and they both have multiple items within them. You'll notice that Anakin appears in both. This is a trivial example, however, not far off from what I was testing on during my interview. Let's start with the traditional for loop. If you've ever taken any type of programming course, you've probably been exposed to our good friend the for loop. It has been a handy tool for programmers for a long time and is still useful today. Let's solve our problem using it. So we're going to define our for loop, and remember we have to create an iterator for for loops. We're going to start it at zero. And then we're going to say while i is less than jedi's dot length. And we have to incre increment our incrementer in order for it to work. And this console is going to yell at me this whole time. So just ignore that. So now we're going to go through there and we're going to loop through everything. So we'll start by creating a variable that we can reference throughout the entire thing. We're going to check and see if not Sith array oops, includes our Jedi. And if it doesn't, that means that this Jedi, if I can type, is not a Sith. And if our Jedi is not a Sith, we can just break because we no longer need to check the rest of the array. If that check doesn't pass, then let's do this. We're going to say this Jedi is also a Sith. To break it down in case I lost you there, so we got our two arrays and we're going to loop over the Jedi's array and we're using an incrementer that we're only going to increment up to a certain number and increment on each loop movement. Then we define our variable, this Jedi, so in this case, for the first one, it refers to Anakin, and it's going to go through this checker. So, does the Sith array include this? Well, then yes, it does. So it's going to skip this, and it's going to say, this Jedi is also a Sith. However, on the second one, we go to Luke, so this is Luke. Does, uh, is not Sith include this Jedi? Nope. Then uh, Luke is not a Sith, and we break out, and we don't execute this code, and we don't execute anything else from this for loop. This seems like a lot of work for an array with two items in it, but the for loop is incredibly useful when we're dealing with a ton of data, and we don't want to run a for loop on every single item such as the Project Euler problems, which I have been working on. Among other things, for each was stamped in the spec in 2015, along with all the other goodness that was given to us in ES6. It serves as a handy method to write clean code that easily iterates over items in array. A for each loop is a function that runs another function, a callback, on each item in an array. 
we define what happens in that callback function. JavaScript is nice enough to give us three parameters in that function, the item in the array, the index of the item, and the whole array. Let's take a look at our problem using a for each loop instead. I've included all three parameters in the function, but we're really only going to be using the first item, which I'm going to be naming a Jedi. The first thing we have to do is create a global state variable to keep track of what is happening. So we're going to call this matching. So now we're going to write our, <clears throat> write our for loop for each. And remember, it takes three, we're running a callback function, so it takes three parameters. We can name them whatever we want, but I'm going to say Jedi index and the original array. Now we can kind of follow the same logic that we did earlier. We're going to do an if statement. If not Sith includes our Jedi matching equals false. And now if we come down here to a console log of matching, we will see that it is false. If it makes more sense, you can separate the callback function into a named function. I think it makes it a little bit more readable. It also allows us to reuse this function wherever we want. Yay, functional programming. So let's do that. I'm just going to cut this out, and I'm going to create a new function up here. Function is Jedi also Sith. Paste that whole thing, get rid of the arrows, and call it here. And voila, false. Our solution essentially does the same thing as our traditional for loop. The only difference is that it keeps running until it reaches the end of the Jedi's array. This finally brings us to the answer to our question, why can't we break out of a for each loop? It's because the loop is running that callback function every single time on every item. So even if you return from here, all it's doing is returning on that individual callback function. It's not returning on the for loop. And break is not a valid uh, statement within a for each loop. There are quite a few different types of loops. Um, they all have different purposes, and I'd recommend looking into each one. You don't always need a for each loop. Likely the most common array methods that appear in tutorials are for each and map. The biggest difference between the two is that map will return a new array while a for each won't. As mentioned earlier by the incredibly sassy MDN docs, choosing the right tool is paramount to success. The number of options may seem a bit overwhelming at first, but I like to take the approach of if it works, it's the right tool. Generally speaking, you can refactor your code to death, but then you're wasting time you could be building stuff. In the case of my interview, I was using the right tool just the wrong way. Had I remembered that you can't break out of a for each loop, things probably would have turned out different. If you have any additional info to share, please drop it in the comments below, and as always, happy coding.